Well, hey there, it's David. Welcome or welcome back to Cross Fitness, helping men and women get in the best spiritual shape in their lives one workout at a time. Quick thought in this video, it's kind of bizarre, but here's the title. How would you like to be Elon Musk's advisor? Okay. All right, this is way out there, but I'll tell you where I'm going here. You know, Elon Musk, you know, he's a pretty bright guy. I think we can all agree on that. You know, SpaceX, Tesla, PayPal, Starlink, Neuralink, et cetera, and so forth. This guy, you know, X, you know, it's just, it's just phenomenal what um, his, he's been able to accomplish in his short lifespan thus far. And uh, so, you know, he's a pretty bright guy, high IQ. Uh, and so think about, you know, if he had a, had a counselor, had an advisor, he went and kind of bounced kind of the tough things off of for him to advise him. You know, that'd be a little overwhelming and a little intimidating, I would think. I wouldn't know, but I would think. So let me, let's go back to a biblical example of this. We're in 1 Kings. And I want to talk about King Solomon, Israel's third king. We had King Saul, then David, and then David's son Solomon, who God invested wisdom in, unparalleled and unprecedented, right? Never before or since has God given a man the, the amount of wisdom that he gave Solomon simply because Solomon asked for a discerning heart to rule the people, judge the people, and God gave him wisdom and wealth and, and peace with his enemies and all that kind of stuff. And yet in the Bible, when, when uh, in 1 Kings, it's, it's listing his administrative staff, you know, the human resources department of Solomon's reign, which took, to, took Israel to the apex of Israeli civilization, there's a man named Zabud, Z-A-B-U-D, the son of Nathan, that the Bible says was Solomon's trusted advisor. I ran across, across that over the weekend, and I've just been chewing on that a little bit. They're like, wow, you know, uh, you know, the contemporary uh, you know, analogy would be, be on Elon Musk's advisor, but back then, the smartest guy that ever lived, and really in the history of the world, was Solomon. I'm not talking about Jesus, we're talking about Solomon, uh, who God entrusted the human being to have that wisdom. I mean, he was an expert in, in like everything, you know, botany, agriculture, horticulture, physical science, you know, natural science, uh, you know, astronomy, you know, you name it. He was the expert. People from all around the ancient world would travel to Israel to, to, to see and hear his wisdom. You know, the Queen of Sheba came and, you know, was just mesmerized and overwhelmed at his wisdom. And yet there was this guy named Zabad that was the king's trusted advisor. So Solomon, I, I mean, is it just me that's kind of wondering about that? Like, this, this dude must have been like, wow, okay, you've got God anointed, God appointed, commissioned wisdom, and here I'm just a regular guy, and yet, you know, I have the job description, the role to advise you. And here's here's what I wanted to point out about that, that I'm just trying to verbally process with you as the camera's running. And that is, would the God that Solomon would have listened to Zebud, the son of Nathan, uh, because Solomon, in all his wisdom, was seduced by his foreign wives to build pagan altars and idols to them at the end of his life. He did not finish strong. Yes, he wrote, you know, the book of Song of Solomon. Yes, he wrote over a thousand Proverbs. Yes, he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, and yes, he was a wise guy, but he made a foolish decision. He did not obey the clear teaching of the Bible that his father David had charged him to do. He said, do not deviate. Do not let anything distract you from following the Lord wholeheartedly as his father David had done. And he didn't do it. And I'm wondering if Zabud, the son of Nathan, the, the trusted advisor would have said, Solomon, sir, <laughs> you don't want to do this. And I wonder, I just wonder what the exchange was in these kinds of conversations and we know that, that God has moved on people prophetically to call out the king, Nathan the prophet. Nathan the prophet pointed to David and said, you are the man. 
you committed adultery with Bathsheba, Uriah the Hittite's wife. And God is not pleased with you. And the sword never left David's house as a result of that. He forgave him, but there was a consequence to David's sin. Now Nathan's son, Zabud, is counseling David's son, Solomon. And I'll bet you he called him out too. But Solomon didn't heed it. You know, whether, whether Zabud advised him or not, Solomon did not uh, heed wisdom and stay true to the one true and living God. And as a result, you know, um, he, he displeased God. The Bible writes that he displeased God. God was angry with him about that. Um, and eventually in the next generation, the kingdom would be divided you know, to the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom of Israel and Judah. And so it just goes to show you uh, that you can have a lot of wisdom, but you cannot have common sense. I remember I used to be a grocery checkout clerk at Kroger. And I remember there, I'd look at the checks of these people, you know, have PhD behind them, you know, and they, and I'd check out their groceries. There was a carton of cigarettes. There was, you know, a couple, 12 packs of beer, and I thought, you know, you are, you are such an intelligent, bright person, but it's obvious you don't have all your crap together. Taking care of your body, you know, it's probably, you may be a hero at work, but you may be a zero at home. I don't know, none of my business, but I know that your people can be educated beyond the, abil, uh, you know, the level of their obedience. And that was Solomon's case. So uh, if you're just a regular person like me, you know, as long as we have a, a value and ethic of being obedient to God, we don't need to have Elon Musk intelligence. We don't need to have Jeff Bezos money. We don't need to have Bill Gates, you know, uh, influence through his Windows uh, operating system. Uh, we can just be obedient in our life, in our lane, in our time, in our season, and we will have a testimony that we please God. So just something to think about today. All right, well, I hope that encourages you to think on it. Uh, for now, I'm David, your virtual mentor, reminding you that I'm always for you. I'm never against you. Take care.